I returned to Homa with big dreams of establishing a world-class cardiology program. Now that was really a big dream at that moment because you must understand we were at the bottom of the oil bust. We had a hospital with no money and huge debt. We had no ICU, no CCU, no cath labs, and I was an invasive trained cardiologist. And there really was a lot of reticence towards developing a cardiology program in this town. We were a group of young doctors really embarking on a whole new area of cardiovascular disease. And it just made sense. We're a group of very young, aggressive, treatment-oriented physicians who cared about our community and who really wanted to advance the stage of cardiovascular disease. One of the things we bonded about was really our passion and our love of medicine and taking care of patients. It really wasn't a burden. It really is more of a privilege for us. Now, whenever you start talking in a small town about developing something that's really world-class, needless to say, there are many skeptics. In fact, they're mostly skeptics because people say, how can you do this when others haven't? But a lot of people back in those days when we started doing all sorts of innovative procedures, they said, why HOMA? What I always said is, why not? We got the biggest or one of the highest incidences of heart disease in the world. If you can't do it here, where can you do it? Patients were either went to New Orleans or in those days, you know, some were just uh, neglected in, in many ways in terms of receiving cardiac care we lived in, in this region. That was our whole idea is to come to a small community and give them the best care possible, even better than in New Orleans. We were doing angioplasty urgently on hearts long before they were doing it in New Orleans because we were ready and willing to come out in the middle of the night and they weren't even doing that in New Orleans. So we did things a little bit different even from the very first and I think that's what set us apart. So ultimately, we expanded. We expanded into Thibodeau and Morgan City and other towns. We could no longer just be home a heart clinic when we were in all of these other towns. And so we tried to choose a name that would not limit our growth. We called ourselves Cardiovascular Institute of the South. Once again, I had skeptics who, who said, why not call yourself Cardiovascular Institute of the World? To which I told one of them in a major meeting, perhaps I should have. There were physicians saying that patients would be rolled in one door and out the other door to the morgue. Well, that's not what happened. And in fact, we had some of the safest statistics in the world. We were using lasers and new techniques for doing things that nobody had ever done before. Many people other places didn't like it at first, but uh, it's now the standard of care. Some of the ideas that we did uh, early on, that's what everybody does today. We didn't want to do average work. We wanted to do the best work that we could possibly do. We wanted to make sure the only limitations imposed on our doctors were our own inadequacies. None of us are perfect. None of us have infinite knowledge, but we're not limited by the system like so many doctors are. The Homa Thibodeau region as a Medicare catchment region was one of the top 10 amputation sites in the United States. And it had number one highest cardiovascular mortality of almost 200 catchment regions in the United States. In the most recent citations by Medicare, we had number one lowest amputation rate in the United States. And we had the number four lowest cardiovascular mortality in the United States in a region known for extraordinarily high incidence of disease. That's what I'm most proud of. That was the dream that we had when we started CIS. That was the goal that we established. Many times as I was scanning patients and doing their echoes, I would hear over and over again, this group has saved my life. They, I have had 10 additional years to my life. I don't know how many more I'll have, but I'm grateful for every one of them. Sometimes in the midst of treatment, a patient may die in our hands. And I cannot tell you the disappointment that occurs in a physician's mind when that happens. It is profound. It's a very lonely feeling. Nor can I share with you what it feels like, the joy 
of saving someone's leg who was told they were going to lose their leg. Those are exhilarating moments that make it all worthwhile to balance against those much fewer but devastating moments. Another very memorable event, because it was such a high profile individual, was Mr. Fred Goad. Fred's a remarkable man. He's done so much in the world. He was one of the people that gave us the ATM card. He was one of the founders of WebMD. Certainly a very high profile man of great accomplishment. First, I went to the podiatry doctor in Nashville, Tennessee to have a piece of glass removed in my foot and the wound wouldn't heal. He discovered that there was no hair growing on my legs and suggested that I might have an arterial disease. He had an angiogram. They were able to open up a narrowed part of an upper leg vessel, but all vessels below the knee were found to be occluded and they said nothing could be done. They thought he might get better. Well, unfortunately, his toe got worse. Nine and a half hours off the table later, he told my wife, the best prognosis here is amputation and you should do it within 60 days. As Fred was going through the machinations of how do I modify my house with handicapped toilets, handicapped bathrooms, etc. Obviously, I've never even heard of Homo Louisiana and couldn't imagine how a doctor in home would be able to help me, but I called him. To my surprise, after his mail, he personally called me back. And if you've ever called a doctor's office, you'll find that just doesn't happen. And he said, I'll be able to tell you right away whether I think I can help you or not. He came back in and sat very patient with the wife and said, I think we've got four ways that I'm able to get blood to flow through your legs. And after the operation, I woke up in the recovery room and looked at my wife and she was crying. I thought, oh no, this didn't work again. And she said, no, thumbs up. Craig was able to get through and do what no doctor had been able to do up to that time. I've been blessed with having a wonderful wife and she's done everything she can to be helpful to me. But I can't imagine what it would have been like if I'd had to have amputated legs and the additional care and treatment and concerns and all the things she would have had to go through to make that work. I will tell you that my experience being from Nashville, Tennessee is the healthcare capital of the United States and no one has any more, if you will, quality of service than you have here in, in CIS. Matter of fact, the yardstick for quality of patient outcome and patient satisfaction, I think is established right here. One of the things that I'm very excited about is really our future. CIS has really been a pioneer in changing the healthcare delivery system over the last 35 years. When we make decisions, we put ourselves in our patient's shoes looking at what's in their best interest, what do they want, and how can we deliver that service. Um, as we continue to grow in our number of patients that we were seeing today, CIS sees over a thousand patients a day, that the care that those patients were getting varied depending on which nurse they were talking to at which point in time. Uh, we thought there was a better way to deliver that access to care by building a virtual care center where we could standardize care and implement protocols whereby patients would get the exact same care each and every time. What makes CIS unique? That's an interesting question. I, I guess the best way I can answer that is its culture. And you probably hear that more and more, but I can't say enough how truly the culture makes a difference in the atmosphere and the place that you work. Wanting to come to work every day, enjoying the people that you work with, and truly feeling like it's a family, and there's people around that support you and that you can count on makes all the difference in the world. We are a family. We are a large family, but all of us communicate with one another. All of us serve as a resource for one another. Every job here is important. All of us contribute to the care that we have given to our patients. And I think that that is gonna happen always. The whole CIS logo means a lot. It's all of us working together to take care of the group of people that need us the most. And down here in South Louisiana, we need it. And we still need it, and we're still providing it 35 years later, which is really an amazing testimony. I think the natural history of cardiology groups is one of dissolution. And if you look at our group, it really has continued to expand. What that equals is, one, 
the highest quality in terms of patient care and also an incredibly enjoyable working environment. And I think those two together are the, the cornerstones of what CIS is all about. I'm incredibly proud of the team that we have here. Certainly the team of doctors and physicians we speak of all the time, but we're not the whole team, of course. There are people under here who, who are really the, the foundation of what we do. There's an axiom that you're only as strong as your weakest link as a chain. And that's true. What has helped propel us were so many people, all the way down to our maintenance people, who went so far and above and beyond what others would do to make this a special place. They helped transform us. They helped inspire us. The nurses, the secretaries, the people who helped us market, the people who bought into the dream that we could deliver better care, that we could change the world in a better way from a medical perspective. That's really what's made CIS. And that's what has made so many practices around the country try to emulate what we're doing. I think as long as we follow our guiding principles, our mission statement, we're going to do fine. We're going to stay on the leading edge. We want physicians, we want healthcare providers, and we want our support personnel that have made us what we are. We want people who buy into the dream of making the best cardiovascular practice anywhere.